This is Straight Talk with Roger Hunt Unscripted. I am your host. Um, just so you know, the topic that we're discussing is rape and incest. Uh, and we understand this may, while this may be a difficult subject for some, some may find it an opportunity for healing and also to be educated and informed. Just so you know, here in America alone, every 107 seconds, there's an American that is sexually assaulted, accounted for 293,000 per year victims that are have been uh, raped and or incest uh, here in the United States. Uh, a very interesting situation, you know, as we we talk about with my other guest, uh, Miss X Blue Rain, who was uh, raped and abducted from her home out out of uh, Tyler, Texas. And then, of course, we had another young lady, Miss Jacqueline Ewing, who was uh, molested by her brother. Uh, so each of these women, and then along with this young man here, uh, Chris Reynolds, uh, we just want to shed some some light on the subject matter. And if this is something that you're dealing with and have dealt with, and maybe suppress the, the images or the feelings that may have happened over the course of the years when you were younger, or if it's happening now as you're you know, an adult, uh, we, we want to encourage you to get help, to seek help. At the end of the show, we will you know, put some information up to whereby you can get some help and, and, and call in uh, for counseling and psychological evaluation if you need that. You know? so, but Chris, again, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you uh, here tonight. And tell us, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're from and everything. And well, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I am an apprentice dancer with the Common Thread Contemporary Dance Company. Okay. Um, I took a couple of semesters off from Webster University while I'm studying my business management degree. I'm okay. also entrepreneurship with a minor in dance. Okay. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now, and I'm also um, serving now at the moment. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Oh, so now you have a very interesting story. Um, and, and I think the way Chris and I met, uh, just so you know, we were, we were at the gym, mm -hmm. and I was reading a book on post-traumatic stress, and you kind of inquired about the book that I was reading, because I was going to interview the, the psychologist on that. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a book by Dr. Stephen Heyman, mm -hmm. uh, a very interesting book. So in fact, there's another great book if you need to read the book. As a matter of fact, it's going to be the book of a month. I'm going to start that, that, that program. Okay. But it had some very interesting facts in it about post-traumatic stress and everything, uh, a trauma that may have happened in your life. And, and even when speaking with Dr. Heyman, uh, some of the events that occur in our life can trigger certain uh, occurrences or instances yeah. to allow a person to behave a certain way. Mm -hmm. and, and with you, I understand that your story is that you were sexually uh, assaulted and molested by a family member, mm -hmm. two family members. Mm -hmm. um, and go ahead and tell us a little bit about your story and then we'll go to the Q&A. Okay, um, so basically, <clears throat> so basically, it started around, I want to say, um, eight or nine years old. Mm -hmm. um, and how old are you now? I'm 32. Yeah. 32, okay. I'm 30, 32 now. Um, so it happened like many, many, many years ago. But um, I knew growing up growing up as a child that I was basically gay. Mm -hmm. um, now, how did you know that? Basically, five years old. I remember walking down on the steps and I was like, I really wasn't attracted to females okay. at that time. And I knew I knew that because I knew something I knew something was different with me. I just knew that I was different. Okay. Um but I did try to date, date girls and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but I knew that I was gay. Um but a little bit of Were the, were there were there I guess I'm kind of curious now. Okay. Were there surroundings in your home or things that maybe your mom did or just mm -hmm. you just never went to play with the girls? Or, I mean, you played I, with I, the girls. I played with the girls. Or just never had the feelings or the attractions for the... The physical feelings and the... the and at five, five years old? Five years old. Well, that's a, and you know what? That's going to be another conversation for another uh, topic. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, but, talk, um, we'll, we'll get back to the... Okay. So, um, I remember the first incident when it happened with one of the family members. Um, we was um, in the house. It was on the couch. 
we had like the couch like right right at the window. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my cousin told me to actually look out the window. So as I proceeded over there and like I kind of like bent over, he stood on top of me. And I remember thinking to myself, now hold on. You said you were about eight, eight years of age. Eight, nine, ten eight, years nine, old. Okay. So but I can't remember now because it's been many, many years ago. But um, I remember thinking to myself, why is this happening? Like why, why, why is my cousin on top of me? Um, so this was a cousin when this was this the first incident? This is the very, 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 very first okay. incident. Okay. Um, and then he, nothing happened after that. I guess he made it had that scared me. Um, the second incident, my grandma, I my grandma specifically, was in her room on the phone, um, and then. My cousin had called me upstairs to um, play the game or something. And then I walked up, I remember walking up the steps, and then as I walked up the steps, um, as I walked up the steps, and he, lay, he was sitting on my, my mother's bed, I remember him pulling his stuff out. Mm -hmm. And I remember him telling me to lick it like a lollipop. And I was like, this is nasty. Like I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't want it. It was just like it was nasty. It's like he just like basically like forced himself on me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, then again, I kept thinking to myself, why is this happening? Why is this happening? But I kept doing it. But you couldn't find yourself even at eight, nine, ten uh, to push yourself off or away or try to run and get help or you just did they threaten you or anything? Yeah, I think I think it was a kind of a threat too, but also I don't know if you know more about sexual molestation. Um, you kind of think it's your fault that it's happening, right. or you don't want to get them in trouble. You feel like it's going to be in fear of basically like breaking up your family, causing friction between the, my mother and auntie. Mm -hmm. So I thought about all that, so I just kept quiet about it. So, and so it continued. So it continued. No continued, continued, continued. Cause like I remember one time I was I was laying in the bed getting ready to go to my auntie house, and basically he was like, "You mine, so don't tell nobody. That I'm gonna be, I'm yours." And I just remember like this was your cousin. Mm -hmm. How old was your cousin? I want to say he was around maybe sixteen. Wow. So he knew that he was wrong. Like, he knew that he was wrong. So, um, the first thing that happened with my brother. Um, so, that's before we go to your brother. Okay. So, your your cousin, even at age of six, at the age of 16, and all of this, was it just the oral sex that he had you perform? Was there anything else? Uh, I mean, or just... he basically, he rubbed it against my anal, but he never... Put it in. Penetrated you. He never penetrated. Okay. 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 So with with that, did that continue on even at the age of sixteen, eight, nine, ten years old? You 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 are. How long did that that kind of molestation continue with your cousin? I mean, I want to say maybe six to a year, six months to a year. Six months to a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and it just. Stop cold turkey. Or it stopped. It stopped. Okay, so to this day, there's no. Do you, is your cousin still alive? Is he? But there was one incident. Um, that it was gonna happen again. I think I had got out of high school. I was like suffering from depression or whatever, mm -hmm. and it kind of proceeded to happen again, but it kind of stopped. Okay. Because like you know, like well, sometimes you get that basically like a little feeling like something gonna happen, mm -hmm. but it didn't happen. And then again, this was for the cousin. How old were you then? Uh, I was 23. So, so even at the age of 23, yeah. were you intimidated by your cousin, fear of your cousin? But, I mean, this may sound weird, but I was actually sexually attracted to my cousin because I guess the incidents had happened. Wow. And it, like, basically, like, confused me sexually because, like, throughout high school, you know, like, when you're in high school, you try to, I've said going through trivia and all that stuff, and 
I never went out since my mom. I never had sex. I didn't really start having sex until I got into college. So, wow. So, with with your cousin telling you that you were his, basically, like your piece of property, you're his. Wow. Uh, I guess did the attraction go. Did you, uh, the attraction started to go away when I started to, like, 19 years old, and I was starting to mean me. Okay. So that's when the attraction started to go away. So by this time, you were fully into it. So we're going to get back to your cousin. So now, when did the molestation start with your brother? Uh, the, the brother was kind of like more so sporadically. Like, sporadically, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, but I remember one incident that specifically was like, we was in the closet or whatever. I guess we was, we was playing. And then all of a sudden, like, he performed all the sex on him. And... Eight or nine years old, you don't know what the white stuff is coming out. So I was like, "Well, what is this? Like, like, why is this?" I think that I was also too with all this. I was ejaculating much, much earlier mm. than I was supposed to, mm -hmm. because I don't know the medical part of it. But like, um, as of now, like when it's time to have sex, or like if I want, if I want to picture somebody, I cannot do. Because I will not, you know, I will not stay in rent for that time. Mm. Wow. And I'm young. <laughs> I'm not no 60-year-old oh, you know, man. I didn't know I was going to get all of this, but I guess <laughs> this is unscripted and we are getting what we're getting, you know, and you're just telling it. Uh, so basically, now, now I'm going to go back to your brother. Your, your brother in the closet, you're in the closet, he's performing oral sex on you and everything. At what point you, you, did you feel like it was okay because in your eight or nine no, years? No, I felt I, I felt really really disgusted at that point. I felt okay. disgusted because I was like, well, like why is my brother doing this to me? Like mm -hmm. we're a family. Like mm -hmm. we are family. It's like disgusting that your brother have an attraction to you. So one point I felt like well maybe. It has happened to him at one point, and but then again, I'm like, but it kept, kept happening like sporadically. Um, but it stopped, and we never talked about it, we never discussed it. Anything. Okay, so I'm gonna do a rewind, okay. and I'm gonna go back to the statement that you made early in the show. So, if at the age of five, or just at the age of five, you presumed or figured that you were gay mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, did you know what the word gay meant? I didn't know I didn't, okay. I didn't know what the, something different. I didn't know what the word gay meant at that age. Okay. But I felt that there was something different in me. Okay. I knew that something was different. Did your parent mom, dad, did they even discuss it with you or talk about it or none of that? Okay, so now. But yet, all of this is going on with cousin. Your cousin's 16, you're between 8 and 10. Uh, this happened to up until you were 23 with your cousin. Yeah, or, it, it, it stopped. It stopped, but then was, picked back was up. It going to happen, but it didn't. Okay, and so then your brother, about the same age. Now, how old was your brother? My brother was the same age as my cousin. Your cousin. Okay, so, and at never at any point did you go to any adult. No. Whether it's been your auntie, your uncle, mom, um, and, and because of the shame that it was brought to the family, you're saying? It was like, I thought I felt like it was going to be shamed and basically it was going to cause like um, friction mm -hmm. between the sisters and stuff like that. And I just feel like, you know, I just keep quiet about it. Even if I don't say nothing, it will go away. And I really didn't really bother it. Bother with it too. Like I just okay. So and, and the question I even you know ask you know people that are abused by other people and they come out and tell the story and and, and I, in talking to Dr. Heyman you know one of the, 
he's a clinical psychologist. Uh, one of the things that he mentions again, things that happen in your life because we suppress our subconscious, mm -hmm. and, and you're studying psychology as well, so mm -hmm. our, our minds we suppress information, mm -hmm. and at certain points, and I've often heard people will dream of images while they're dreaming, may not understand why they're having those mm -hmm. dreams, but yet they come to tuition because now they're from the subconscious to the conscious, mm -hmm. now you start to remember what happened. So mm -hmm. as a child, we suppress a lot of things that happen, and then now as adults, because we have dreams, they, they come they come to the forefront. Right. With you, how old were you? Thirty two now. Thirty two now. How old were you? Uh, you you say you told your mom. You finally told your mom. Yeah, I told my mother in. I think the same around two thousand twelve. So I had to be anywhere from twenty nine. So, so it was three years ago. So three three years ago, you're twenty nine years old. Uh, my did my math right, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so you decided to let mom know. What was your mother's reaction? I mean, as far as her energy level, it was just like it was dry. Okay. It was very, 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 very dry, and she didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. For one, um, she never really comforted me as a person that would be hurt. Um, that's what kind of what I was looking for, um, but I didn't get it. Um, and we never talked about it. But then, like, well, I do remember it was another couple of days after, she said she heard that I was a prostitute. And I don't know what she heard. Okay. Well, I'm going to get back to the part, and I, and I think sometimes you know, we as a people, and I'm talking about all people, <clears throat> where, and it doesn't matter what race you are because it goes on in all races. Right. I understand people are just like, I'm going to shun this under the carpet. I don't want to talk about it. It's taboo. Uh, it doesn't happen. But and again, one of the reasons for Straight Talk with Roger Unscripted is to bring subject matter. It's not to put anybody to shame. It's not to put anybody's business out there. But it's to, to, to help, uh, to, to encourage and to let you know there is help because somebody's dealing with the same issue that you are. Mm -hmm. And I, I I wanted, you know, when I, I thought about doing the subject matter, you know, because I know more women may come forward than men. Mm -hmm. And statistically speaking, you know, yeah, men are more afraid than you. Yes, I'm a macho. Whether you're gay or not, you know, they don't want to talk about it, mm -hmm. you know. So, but when you came to me and said you saw the book that I was reading, and you said, well, you have a story to tell, you know, and I was like, wow, this is just like a blessing to be, you know, you being able to talk about it. <clears throat> uh, so, so why now? Why tell the story now? Um, telling the story is also basically for my own healing. Okay. Um, I've been very depressed. Um, I've been to the hospital, in and out of the hospital, um, suffering like anxiety attacks too. Um, it's, it's messing up my concentration. I really can't focus because um, I'm thinking about them images, play like them images in my head and I just really, it's time to live in that freedom that I was designed for. So, so you think that, okay, and this is a question we kind of talk about this off camera, is that have you confronted your cousin and your brother to say, this is what you did to me, and I need you. And, and basically what you said, you want them to say that they're sorry for doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have, I haven't. And I think that you brought a really good, a really good point. And at some point, when I'm ready, I need to do it. Be because, because here's the thing. If, if they did it to you, my question is, how many other, whether it be family members or other members, how many other people have they molested? And see, that's the, that's the, that's the more serious nature to the issue at hand because you may not be the only victim. Yeah, that's true. And maybe at that time that it was happening, they may have thought, okay, but then someone else is struggling <laughs> and dealing with the same thing that you are, and, and yet they're still out there like it's oh, no big deal. Right. 
Because you know, it's fine. You know, I'll do it again. Nobody's going to say anything. Oh, it's just, again, it's swept under the rug. Right, because, I mean, also, too, like, I don't know about you and how right. you grew up, but, like, we grew up basically, like, what goes on in the house stays in the house. Well, that's, and that, that, that happens think, a lot now. That still happens a I, lot now. And I think that that needs to change. We need to get out and talk about things because if we're talking about things that way, we can heal each other. Mm -hmm. But we do. As human beings, we stuff up on the carpet, and then it causes friction. It does cause and, friction. And different things. Like, I have not been able to have a, basically a stable relationship. Okay. <clears throat> but, and that's, and that's my point, too. And you say when you're ready, and I understand that. But at the same time, until you're ready, and I just say that if there's other victims, and I'm not just putting your business out there or anything like that, because we're, we're on television, but that may be suffering from the same situation, whether it's the, the people did this to you or those that are dealing with it on another side issue somewhere else in the country, around the world, it has to be to some point, you know, brought to head because Will you have peace? You're not going to have peace, but then, yet they're going out and doing their things and everything else too. So, but at some point, when and where do you confront your perpetrators to say enough is enough, whether it be with them or would be with someone else? Because I, again, I assure you, the same people that, that did to you, your brother and your cousin, they probably again did. How many others are victims and suffering and jailing? So again, the healing is not to put anyone to shame. They need help. Yeah, you know they need help, mm -hmm. and and so and that's what we want to do. Get you some help now. You're you're getting counseling right now. You yeah, said. I'm getting I'm getting counseling, but also to um, dance is also my counseling. It's always been my basically like my therapy. Your therapy, also, your escape. Me and my escape, but I also have been talking to a really good counselor that I met at uh, Webster University mm -hmm. when I attended and. Like he really helped me find my voice mm -hmm. and and how to express myself and and like I talk to my mentor all the time. We talk about everything and so basically those are my person that kind of help me think. Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes like that. Some days I sit and just cry about it and I just get those feelings out because we need to get those feelings out. Though um, I have been on depression, antidepressant, only for a short moment, but. I also go to church. Um, I go to faith church in our city. So that's helped me too. And I also put myself around positive people. Because, okay. I mean, we do enough, en enough negative talk with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if I'm around somebody that's going to pick me up, regardless of whether I'm having a, you know, a bad day or a good day, I need that to put people around me. Cause but, but when will you have, and again, you're depressed, you're, you're looking for an escape, you're unable to have a relationship, mm -hmm. you deserve to be happy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but because of all of this, do you think if the time will come that when, do, when you do confront your brother and your cousin, that then you can have peace? You can have some peace and release, think, because you, you're, you're, you're carrying all this burden in within yourself. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Your current burden. So that load is on you until you get it released. You have to let it out. Mm -hmm. You can't, the, the healing can't yeah. be really beginning. Yeah, because I feel like this. I, I feel like I'm halfway healed. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not fully healed. Just mm -hmm. like yeah. it's getting sitting here kind of having a conventional view. I feel like I'm halfway healed. I'm halfway yeah. healed. And you're totally right. Mm -hmm. Like you are absolutely right. But I'm a spiritual being, so I'm gonna first go to God first mm -hmm. and like give maybe talk to him about it and just like, you know, ask him, is this really gonna give me that peace I've been looking for? And if he says yes, I'm hopping on it right there now because then that way then that way. I know I'm going to be here with all this. He says, this is your time you need to say it. Say it, and I'm going to let it go. 
because like, I've been trying to let it go. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but um, you brought up a very good cool point. I never had the courage or thought about even confronting. It, it, and again, it's, it's not to confront in order to uh, blast them out of anything, but it's more so to confront because again, you don't have peace. And, 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 and again, these sap suckers, I'm not gonna say it, these sap suckers are out here doing whatever they're doing, they're happy going about their life. Mm -hmm. Maybe they do have some gift, maybe they don't have any remorse, I don't know. Right. But is it fair to you to say that you have to deal with, and they don't probably know that you're going through what you're going through. And see, that's the sad part of it. You're dealing with all of this. They, they have no idea, no clue. Right. No clue whatsoever as the effect as a child that they inflicted upon you. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, irregardless, and, and you know, people are probably saying, well, he's gay enough. That doesn't matter. Yeah. The fact of the matter mm -hmm. that this, this incident happened, it happened and it was swept under the rug. Right. You told your mm -hmm. mother, she kind of turned the other cheek. And, and some of the other victims that I spoke to basically said, my mom fought at me and said it was my fault. Yeah. Don't let it happen again. You know, you hear that, and so the victims all, often feel responsible for the situation happening. Mm -hmm. In regards to how it happened, mm -hmm. they felt responsible. Mm -hmm. You know, so saying a lot of the rape victims, they'll say, well, it's my fault. Maybe if I hadn't had that on, maybe if I hadn't did that, you know. So, and again, with your cousin and brother, they may need to get some help, seriously. And it's probably about time that they get some help, too. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. You may just want to just say, hey, I need to talk to you about this situation. Mm -hmm. It's been bothering me. Mm -hmm. And if hey, if you need me to go with you, you know what? I'll go with you. I, I'll I'll be there. You know, one of my one of my other production members will we'll be there with you. What, what, I mean, seriously, if if you need some help, and again, it's not to kind of, you know, jam all at the same time, but you know, just talk to me. I need to talk to you. This is a friend of mine. This is Roger. You know, we're gonna talk to you. I just brought him on some work or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, you got to do it. Right. You know, you got to do it. Everybody's story is different. Uh, mm -hmm. I appreciate you. What would you tell someone watching this show tonight? What would you, I mean, what you're going through? You've already said a lot. You've said a lot. I commend you, first of all, for for being able to come on the show and talk about your experience. Uh, because it, 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 it is, it, it is, you, you, I know you were a little bit nervous at first, but then, you know, we talked, that's why we went and did our talk off camera. Uh, but at the same time, to tell your story and express yourself, uh, what would you tell someone? <clears throat> I would basically tell someone to actually go get the help. Mm -hmm. um, tell, tell your mother, tell your father, tell somebody that you feel like you can trust. trust. Mm -hmm. um, because your healing and your peace is everything to you as a human being. 